Hey Joy. Hello. Uh, we have yeah. at the moment seven no, no, people no, in the room. No. And including uh, our AD has walked out. So I'm just I realize we should start, but I'm waiting a few more minutes hoping we'll have a few more people. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I noticed that I cannot uh, uh, change uh, uh, move the slide uh, myself. So I think you can make a brief introduction for the chair slide. So mm. well, when we, as soon as we can start, you, you know, you'll just yeah, tell I me know. when to page through the slides as, as, no, as no, you no. present I, I think, them. Uh, yeah, I think the chair slide is, uh, is just some slide, so I think you can um, you can introduce yourself. Uh, uh, oh, I you're saying I should uh, stop share, ch sharing yeah. those and you can share them directly. Yes, that'll work. Mm -hmm. There. Sorry. Mm. Can other folks hear when Asian, when Asian is speaking clearly? Because I'm having a little trouble hearing him clearly. But that could be because I'm sitting in the front of the room and the speakers are all pointing at you guys. We can hear very clearly from you. Okay. We will start in a few minutes one way or another but I'm hoping we'll get a few more people in the room. So, Aijin, are you going to share those slides from your end so that you can control them? I, sorry. Okay, I realize we don't have a lot of people in the room. What, six, seven, nine, 11, 13. So we ended up 14 or 15 people in the room. I wish we had more, but we do need to get started or things will get out of hand. I'm Joel Halpern. This is the Savnet Working Group. I'm your co-chair. I'm with Ericsson. My, my co-chair is Aijun Wine with, not Wine, Wang, I'm sorry, Aijun, with uh, China Telecom. He is re attending remotely and will be, is here to help run the working group. So uh, we, tr we try to stay in sync on what we're doing here. This is the note well. This is important. Yes, you see it in every meeting, in every session. That's because it's very important. These are the rules we are agreeing to function by. They include rules about copyright, rules about the right for IETF to build from your, anything you bring here, rules about the fact that we are recording all of this, and rules of civil conduct. 
I'm told that there was a working group meeting this morning where two of the participants got into a shouting match. That is not acceptable. <laughs> I can shout even louder. We will not have that happen. <laughs> Note well is important. Civil behavior is important. Please. And thank you for your participation. So, the working group has adopted the problem statement drafts. We have two of them, one for the intra-domain problem, one for the inter-domain problem. This is the first milestone for the working group. We are, this is what we are required to do. So thank you very much for starting on it. But I remind you, adopting is the start of the process, not the end. What adopting means is now the working group owns figuring out what we want to do with it, what does it need, how do we advance it, work it forward. Adopting says, we agree this is a good starting point. So everybody needs to be looking at this. We will have a brief presentation about this material, but this is the focus for the working group at the moment, is moving these documents, making sure they're right, and then figuring out what we want to do based on them. So they're really important. So if we can reach the point, we don't need to reach the point of we're ready to publish them, but we do need to reach the point that we think they have the right content and describe the right uh, general problem. And then we have the question for the working group, is this a problem we want to address and believe it is useful to address? I hope so, but it is the working group's decision, not mine, not Aijin's, and we will work with and listen to the working group about this. There is one presentation that was scheduled today to discuss this issue, but unfortunately the presenter can't make it, so we'll be skipping that presentation. We hope to see the discussion on the list. And in fact, discussion on the list is the most important part. But the corollary is, because we have a little more time today, love to get some discussion in the room. If there are issues, questions, comments, concerns, please do. And then we need to figure out how we move forward with, that, with these documents. So as, as we said, discuss those adopted things, introduce the updates to the architectures. The architectures are still individual drafts. Until we finish the first phase, the working group is not going to adopt architectures or solutions, but we can certainly give feedback to folks who are working really hard on figuring out what is possible and how does it work and how to communicate it to us so it's useful review. And we'd really like more input on operational aspects. So we'll be doing 10 minutes on the summary of intra and interdomain problem statements. And then we've got 30 minutes each for the two architectures, because that's the next upcoming work. So we wanted to give the presenters time to actually go over the work. Following that, we won't be getting item four. I wish we were, but the presenter said he couldn't make it. Well, it happens, people can't make things. And then we will give a little time to some of the interesting work that folks are doing around this evaluating what the impact on table size, work on open source that is supporting the SAV network. Really glad to see it happening. As I said to the presenter, it's helpful if we can understand the relationship between the open source work and what we have to do in the working group. But I'm really glad to see people doing open source implementation work that's related to this. And we'll get a few minutes on the Yang. Really the Yang has to reflect where we go, but. They've started working on it, so we gave them a few minutes since we seem to have the time. Does anybody have any questions or comments on the chair's overview? If not, Um, whoops, where's, ah, there we are. 
Dan, you're up. Okay. Just tell me when yeah. to advance the slides. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Uh, hello, everyone. This is uh, Dan Lee from Tsinghua University. Uh, sorry that I have to attend uh, this, this meeting remotely because I did not get the visa. So I will uh, give a very brief summary of uh, interdomain and interdomain self problem statements and the plan for next step work. Next. Uh, yeah, in the uh, interdomain and interdomain solve problem statement, uh, we conduct uh, the gap analysis of existing solve mechanisms, analyze the fundamental problems of them, and uh, uh, most importantly, describe the requirements for new interdomain and interdomain solve mechanisms. Uh, I still introduced that uh, currently the two uh, drafts have been adopted by the uh, Soviet Working Group. Next. So for the uh, interdomain solve problem statement draft, we have uh, eight uh, versions uh, before working group adoption uh, to accommodate uh, actually uh, many comments from the community. After uh, working group adoption, we also have uh, two uh, versions. Next. And uh, in the uh, problem statement, uh, we just uh, analyze the uh, uh, technical uh, problems for ACR based solve, strict URPF, and loose URPF. Next. And uh, we also uh, just uh, uh, state the uh, okay requirements for a new interdomain self mechanisms. The requirements include that uh, we should uh, okay support automatic update to reduce operational overhead, improve the validation accuracy upon existing mechanisms, as well as uh, support the incremental or partial deployment. Next. And for interdomain self problem statement, we have uh, okay ten uh, versions before working group adoption, and also have uh, two versions after working group adoption. Uh, next. And uh, okay, for the interdomain uh, problem statement draft, we just uh, analyze the uh, technical limitations of uh, uh, existing. Uh, technologies such as uh, ACR-based ingress filtering, source-based RTBH filtering, strict URPF, new CRPF. Next. Uh, feasible pass URPF, VRF URPF, as well as uh, EFP URPF. Next. And we also uh, concluded the requirements for a new interdomain solve mechanism. Uh, the new me mechanism should uh, uh, improve the validation accuracy over existing mechanisms, work in incremental and partial de uh, de deployment uh, scenario. Uh, this is uh, especially uh, important for interdomain scenarios. Reduce the operational overhead uh, and uh, communicate uh, solve specific information between ASCs. I think uh, uh, the final requirement is uh, particularly uh, emphasized by yeah, some colleagues in the community, such as Jared. It's just, uh, okay, uh, we should focus just how to build the uh, validation list uh, in the routers, as well as uh, the communication list uh, between routers or between ASCs. Next. So based on the current uh, uh, status, uh, of the uh, uh, working group, we just uh, make the following plan for next step works. So if uh, the working group can uh, agree with uh, the problem statement of uh, uh, the okay uh, uh, existing work, uh, we just uh, should uh, fix uh, how to design a solid architecture for interdomain and interdomain networks. 
And in the architecture uh, documents, uh, our goal is uh, just uh, how to simultaneously satisfy the accurate validation and automatic validation goals. Okay, uh, just uh, I think these are the two most important requirements for the new mechanism, as well as the considerations for the security, convergence, and partial deployment. And another work is just to uh, design the framework for how to exchange the sub-specific information between routers for interdomain subnet and uh, between ASs for interdomain subnet. But uh, uh, I'm not sure that uh, uh, whether we should just uh, uh, make this uh, okay uh, information uh, exchange framework okay included in the subnet architecture draft or just. Uh, make uh, an independent uh, document. Uh, maybe, okay, we need more discussion. And we also need to design some data young models. Uh, uh, maybe this is uh, the work after the architecture, uh, okay, documents uh, get uh, ad ad adopted. Uh, but okay, we should make this kind of uh, operation and management, uh, uh, okay, uh, standardization between the uh, routers and the, okay, servers. And we also needed to design how to extend existing routing protocols to exchange the sub-specific information between routers. I think this time, uh, Nan Geng, uh, okay, made a uh, presentation in the IDR working group, just a very, very brief introduction about its architectures. Uh, okay, should cover both interdomain, interdomain and IPv4 and IPv6. Okay, so uh, these are uh, my brief summary of uh, uh, the problem statement uh, uh, okay, drafts. So okay. thank you, Dan. Yeah. Um, I will okay. note as chair that the, the first two bullets are what we have said we will do, assuming the working group agrees we will move forward. The next yeah. two, as you've written them, actually assume some answers from the architecture work, which the architecture work needs to be done first before we know what needs to be Yang modeled or what protocols may or may not need to be extended. And I see we have a question from the floor. So Jeff Haas, please go to the microphone. Thank you, Jeff Haas. Uh, Dan, thank you for a good presentation. I don't have uh, full time to follow this work as you're doing it. So you're mostly getting my comments each IAPF. So my apologies there. Uh, the statement of the work, I think, is good and precise, so thank you for that. One item that I find absent from the requirements, uh, and curious if the working group has discussed, is that uh, the SAV information will very likely be propagated through the routing system, whatever mechanisms you decide to build, uh, at a different speed than the routing information itself, and resulting forwarding installation for that. One of the concerns when you have this happen, especially since the SAV information may be much larger, I see you have a presentation later, later to discuss this, is that uh, you may end up with uh, a break in the time between the installation of you know, the source address uh, validation and enforcement versus the forwarding changes. Has there been any discussion about how to minimize this and the accidents that happen when they are out of sync? There is some, I believe, material in the requirements that talk about the issue of convergence, but I don't believe it, it is clear enough with regard to the issue you're raising. I realize you're very busy, but it would be really good if you could take a look and send a note to the list saying, not necessarily the exact words we need in the draft, but this section should discuss this issue in an email to the list so the working group can decide because the fact that I personally am sympathetic doesn't matter. It's what the working group wants to put in. Okay, but it is, it is lightly touched upon is what you're saying. As I understand it, yes. Okay, thank you. So, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Jeff, for the uh, uh, pointing out this issue. Actually, in, uh, last time uh, ITF meeting, we have discussed a lot about this, just the uh, Maybe, okay, uh, people are just concerned that uh, maybe the uh, soft table in the routers uh, uh, will be very large to actually occupying, yeah, just uh, a lot of uh, space. So uh, actually uh, this time 
we I think uh, Nan Chen will make a presentation later uh, to just uh, introduce his uh, analysis work about the uh, potential, uh, okay, uh, just the uh, amount of uh, this uh, uh, sub table compared with the uh, fifth table. Uh, actually, okay, this is also uh, what we talked uh, a lot of with uh, people, uh, including Jeff as well as uh, uh, Jared. So yeah, uh, uh, this is an important issue, but we are not sure whether we should add this as an independent uh, item in the proper statement draft, because maybe this is related to the, the chip design, uh, the internal okay, uh, device uh, design. So yeah, we are not sure whether we should explicitly put this as an item in the uh, okay, requirement. Yeah. Okay, Rudiger. Hi, Rudiger Volk. Um, sorry, I'm not really deep into this. Um, uh, what uh, kind of triggers questions with me in the uh, presentations like you gave is uh, you mention accuracy. And I wonder uh, how clear and well-defined you actually have designed uh, uh, <clears throat> um, and defined what you consider accurate. And the, the draft actually set, talks about false positives and false negatives. It is explicit about what kinds of inaccuracy. Dan summarized it in the slides, but the draft is actually significantly specific as to what kinds of inaccuracy cause problems with the current systems and need to be avoided in solutions? Uh, yeah, well, okay, kind of, kind of the, um, uh, what I guess, uh, and that is related to bringing up the question of convergence at the last meeting, uh, as mentioned by Jeff just just a few minutes ago is that, well, okay, um, many people uh, uh, on first step would think accuracy is something that is exactly binary. And my, well, okay, I'm pretty sure that one of the major problems of the Cefnet domain is that, yes, there are clear black and white cases, but uh, actually avoiding uh, doing damage to the gray area, which quite certainly is around here, at, at least, for example, in the case that convergence is happening, uh, I think, I think is, uh, uh, is very important. And I guess uh, just saying uh, negative or positive, uh, or well, okay, uh, 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 fails negative, fails uh, <clears throat> positive, probably is not sufficient to chart the space. Okay, well, take a look at the draft and see if the convergence discussion is sufficient. If it's not, at least point us to what needs to be added, even if you don't want to send specific text. Ben, please. Hi, Ben Madison, work online. Um, it's difficult maintaining state across Rudica comments, but I'll do my best. Um, <laughs> just going back to the, the point that Jeff was making, um, I, cause I think that a bit of the, a, a distinction was lost. Um, there are, there, there's two aspects to this. There's the problem of the fact that this is likely to be a lot of information and distributing it and converging on a steady state is likely to be a hard problem because it's hard distributing a lot of data. But I think the more important point that he was making, and you can correct me if I mis misunderstood you, Jeff, um, is that there's likely to, de depending on the semantics of that information and how it relates to the forwarding database, there's likely to be race conditions that we can introduce if they converge at different paces relative to one another. And we need to try and make sure that whatever we're designing is um, erring on the side of, I, don't, I can't remember which way around the terminology once, but incorrectly allowing traffic to continue flowing during that um, inter-protocol convergence gap 
as opposed to transiently dropping it on the floor and causing black holes to open. And before we even get to it, which way we err, make sure we agree on how we want it to err and that our protocol behavior exhibits what we want with yeah. regard to the convergence and race conditions. Yeah, exactly. The and working group could pick a different answer, but we better be deliberate about it, not accidental. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's important. I don't think that we want to box ourselves into a design that requires a tight coupling between those two processes. And we need to live with a, we need to accept that we live in a world where there is going to be transient mismatch between those two sets of state. And we need to make sure that we don't do something harmful while it's true. Well, speaking personally, I strongly agree with you. I hope the working group does. <laughs> okay. Well, so, yeah, uh, I, I actually, Ben, thank you for your comments. Actually, uh, the problem you point out is very important. I think we also just uh, uh, have some kind of description in the problem statement draft. And that will be our, one of our main focus in the architecture and the protocol design, actually. Okay, thank you. Okay, we will now move on to the next presentation. We have 30 minutes allotted for this. I'm not even sure I know who's presenting this. Anand, you're, you're ready. Go ahead. Nan, go ahead. No, man, we can't hear you. I've passed you slide control. You can advance yourself, but uh, we can't currently hear you. Okay, he's trying to fix his audio. Hello, yeah, I'm back. There you are, okay, I will pass you slide control and then you can present. Okay, thank you, Joe. Uh, hi, all right, uh, I'm Nanga from Huawei Technology, I will uh, introduce uh, the, up, the main updates of the intro domain subnet architecture. Uh, there seems a big delay on my side. I cannot see the next slide. Okay. Uh, hi, Joe. Uh, can you help uh, me uh, control the slides? Because the delay seems uh, big on my side now. Okay. Uh... Okay. Uh, you can control my slide, and uh, I will open the local file on my side. Okay, thank you. Uh, about the case, uh, about the case three, uh, this draft uh, presents some yeah. high-level I, I will, I will advance uh, when you say so. Interdomains of mechanisms. The main goal is to uh, satisfy the requirements summarized in the problem statement draft. Uh, okay. Uh, we saved the, uh, a couple of comments uh, in IETF 116. Uh, 
and uh, from row uh, is that uh, we don't standardize the component level. And she mentioned that the sub protocol extension is out of the scope of the working group. Uh, and we incorporate these comments in the updated draft. And uh, Rudiger, he mentioned the security consideration. Also, Jeff also uh, mentioned the security uh, considerations about uh, information carried in the messages. Uh, actually, we also received some comments on our inter-domain architecture. Some comments are relevant to the inter-domain architecture, so we also incorporate uh, that, those comments in this draft. Next, uh, please. Uh, we made a couple of updates to previous version of the draft. First, we clearly define some related information and uh, some specific information, particularly some specific information. Uh, and uh, second, we remove uh, the de descriptions about the solution and the more focus on communication between entities instead of components. Uh, and this, uh, this updates also a, re a response to Zhou and Xu Yan. And we also add some use cases to show uh, why the architecture can work and uh, how the architecture uh, can potentially solve the uh, limitations of existing some mechanisms. And uh, next, uh, we add more descriptions on convergency and the partial incremental considerations uh, uh, many people are interested in the convergence, so we also uh, do some analysis in this draft. And uh, finally, we had more descriptions on security, manageability, and the privacy considerations. This is also a response to Rudger and Jeff's comments. Next, please. Uh, this is the table of uh, the contents. Uh, we double the pages of our draft and add many, many, many uh, details in the, in the revised draft. Next, please. Uh, this, these are design goals. Uh, these goals are consistent with, uh, are aligned with the uh, requirements described in the problem statement. Uh, so how to achieve the goals? We have some thoughts here uh, for goal two. Uh, Existing some AI mechanisms usually get uh, primarily generate uh, some rules based on routing information, but uh, uh, in some scenarios like uh, asymmetric routing, routing information is not enough to uh, help routers generate uh, accurate uh, some rules. So uh, some information specific sub is needed uh, that can provide more accurate information for routers. And for go one and go two, we can follow the existing URPF flag mechanisms. We can automatically, uh, automatically update uh, the information and uh, uh, working in incremental deployment. Next, please. Uh, before uh, introducing our intro domain architecture, we firstly define uh, self-specific information because this terminal term is uh, very important in our draft. Uh, self-specific information uh, represents any information indicate the uh, accurate incoming direction of source addresses. And uh, this information is uh, uh, specialized for self uh, it can help routers to generate uh, accurate uh, sub rules. Uh, here are some examples of such information, like uh, topology information, uh, hidden, uh, for example, hidden prefixes, uh, and uh, second, uh, forwarding information, for example, real forwarding passes or real incoming interfaces. And uh, finally, the information can also be a sub rule. It can indicate the uh, real uh, incoming interfaces of a uh, specific uh, source prefix. Uh, the information, the newly defined information can replace or supplement uh, routing information when routers generate some rules so that they, they, the routers can generate accurate rules. Uh, 
Next, please. Okay, this is uh, the main idea of uh, our intro domain architecture. Uh, besides the routing information and the architecture, routers can automatically advertise the sub-specific information to other routers, and other routers can generate uh, some rules based on this uh, advertised information. Uh, and uh, under incremental deployment, we can compare routing information and the sub -specific, specific information to generate rules because uh, uh, not all routers can advertise sub specific information. So routing information can also be leveraged. Uh, the figure shows a simple example. Uh, router 2, uh, under existing sub mechanisms, router 2 will generate sub rules primarily based on the routing information advertised by router 1. Uh, this process is automatic, but uh, the results may not be accurate. And now, under this architecture, router 2 can generate sub rules based on sub specific information. This process is automatic and uh, accurate. Next, uh, please. This, uh, this figure shows our intro domain architecture. We have two entities, a source entity and a validation entity. Source entity will advertise some related information uh, that is routing information or some specific information to validation entity. And the validation entity will receive this information and generate rules for validation. Uh, between them, there is uh, a communication channel, and that's the main focus of our, our draft. Next, please. So how to advertise the, the information? Uh, first uh, is routing protocol. We can use routing protocol to advertise the routing information to the receivers. Um, so routing protocol is, is included in our architecture. And the second is a uh, sub specific protocol that is newly uh, named in our draft. Uh, this protocol is used to advertise sub specific information. And finally, management protocols uh, are also included in the architecture so that we can easily manage uh, or uh, some me mechanisms, maybe. Next, please. Uh, about a South specific uh, protocol, uh, this protocol, as described in the last set, is used for uh, propagating sub specific uh, information from source to the validation entity. Uh, since uh, there is no uh, existing protocol to carry this information, so we define such a concept to describe uh, the, this kind of protocol. Uh, so this concept or this term is not a specific protocol design, it's a general definition. Uh, for if we want to implement the sub specific protocol, we need to uh, do them in other graphs. But uh, in this draft, we also describe some uh, uh, necessary features of this uh, uh, protocol. Uh, first, uh, uh, in the implementation of the protocol, uh, the sub-specific information should be clearly defined, that is, uh, what information needs to be communicated. And uh, the data structure or format of the information should be defined. And, uh, the operations and the timing for origin originating processing the messages carrying this information should also be defined. And the next, uh, we should provide a sufficient assur assurance uh, of transmission reliability and the timeliness. This is also a response to Eager's comments in the last meeting. And the next is authentication of sessions can be conducted before establishment. Uh, this is a response to uh, Rudiger's comments. Uh, and uh, finally, we have no particular limitations to connected security models to the, uh, uh, to the protocol. 
um, it's, it should be noted that concrete protocol designs or implementations are not the focus of this document. We only show high level uh, designs. Next, please. Uh, here we have two use cases. This page shows use case one. Uh, the figure shows uh, uh, asymmetric routing in the multi homed subnet scenario. Uh, subnet one ad advertises uh, prefix P1 to router one and uh, advertises P2 to router two, but uh, subnet one may send packets with source P1 and the P2 to uh, each of the rotors. Uh, under existing mechanisms, false positive may appear uh, rotor one only because rotor one only permits P1 at the interface one if URPF, uh, especially uh, strictly URPF is enabled. And the rotor two will only permit P2 at uh, interface two. Uh, under this architecture, uh, routers are allowed to exchange asymmetrically advertised rules. Router 1 and Router 2 can exchange rules advertised by sub subnet 1. Then Router 1 and Router 2 can uh, get the complete set of legitimate prefixes of subnet 1. And uh, next, uh, please. Uh, use case 2. Uh, the figure shows uh, a scenario of blocking internal prefixes at uh, internet interfaces. Uh, under the existing mechanisms, we may need to manually configure uh, rules to block uh, internal prefixes, uh, including P1 and P2 at uh, Rotor 4 and uh, Rotor 5. Uh, now, under the architecture, we can automatically collect uh, internal prefixes because router 1, 2, and 3 can proactively advertise uh, internal prefixes to uh, router 4 and router 5. Then router 4 and router 5 can establish the uh, block, uh, filtering rules at the uh, local external interfaces. Uh, but uh, we, we know that uh, the exchanging and the rule generation manner should be defined in the future mechanisms that are not in the scope of the architecture. Next, please. Uh, about convergence considerations. Uh, uh, this is also mentioned by Ben and uh, Jeff. Uh, uh, in the architecture, we know that Source entity must advertise updates of some related information to the validation entity. Uh, and the uh, uh, validation entity must uh, update the local sub rules immediately. Uh, uh, this process uh, should be uh, concretely defined in the implementation of the architecture because this process is uh, highly relevant related to the uh, real uh, definitions of uh, some specific information. And uh, we also show some potential work directions in the draft. Uh, some details can be referred to uh, draft. Next, please. Uh, this is about incremental partial deployment considerations. Uh, in the infra domain uh, uh, networks, uh, there may be only one urban administrator, but uh, in some cases, due to based deployment or limitations coming from multi vendor uh, supplement, supplement uh, not all devices can be upgrade, upgraded. Uh, and support advertising sub specific information. So we cannot obtain complete sub specific information in such cases. Uh, so our idea is to uh, use routing information as a supplement of specific information for rule generation. And uh, we also have some other suggestions, uh, such as taking 
on proper validation modes and uh, taking on appropriate actions. Uh, next, please. Uh, about security considerations, we received uh, many comments uh, on security considerations in the last meeting. So we add uh, more descriptions and analysis in this section. Um, but in intra-domain network, uh, the trust model is relatively simple. Uh, in many cases, uh, the devices uh, uh, in the intra-domain network can be trusted because they are in a, a trusted domain. Uh, but uh, we also analyze the potential stress and the solutions supposing that the devices within the domain or under the same administrator do not trust each other. So we show the potential stress in the draft. We also provide the uh, possible solutions to address the stress and uh, their gaps um, so that uh, the readers can get more information, can, uh, get a better uh, understanding on the security considerations. Uh, <coughs> and uh, we stress that we, when we implement the architecture in the future protocols, the, the existing security mechanisms of the protocol can be taken if we are extending an existing protocol. Next, please. Uh, manageability considerations. This section is uh, newly added in the updated uh, draft. Uh, is uh, is a, a response to leaders' comments. Uh, we uh, I think it is necessary because manageability can help operators to easily manage uh, uh, the sub mechanisms, and we can easily get the working status of the mechanisms. So we describe that uh, the necessary tools like Young uh, diagnosis approach logging tools and uh, monitoring or troubleshooting mechanism should be provided in the implementation of the architecture. Next, please. Uh, about privacy consideration, uh, this, is, this section is uh, in line with the uh, charter's requirement. So in the charter, we need to analyze the privacy issues. Uh, in the draft, we add this section uh, <clears throat> uh, currently, we think uh, there is no uh, critical privacy issues in the intra-domain uh, scenarios because uh, the devices are usually uh, operated by uh, a single organization or company. And uh, on, co on co contrast, uh, when the rotors can proactively advertise such information, uh, the information can be helpful for network management, maybe such as fault diagnosis or traffic visualization. <coughs> and the next, please, uh, acknowledgement. Thanks for the valuable comments from those people. Thank you. Uh, next steps. Uh, the final page of slides. Uh, well, uh, comments are welcome, and we will continue to revise the comments. Thank you. <coughs> Any questions, comments, discussions? Go ahead, Jeff. Jeff Oz, uh, this comment is addressed to the chairs. Uh, the presentation here actually answered my prior question. It seems that the architecture does contain the considerations that I was asking about but we seem to have a uh, mismatch with the requirements documents. So maybe decide what do you want to do about that? Well, if, the, if you see something missing from the requirements document, tell us on the list and we'll add it. Thank you. I am glad that the architecture is addressing the concern you already had, but we should make sure we capture it in the requirements so that we don't confuse ourselves. Any other questions, comments? Seeing none. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Lan Chengqing from Tsinghua University. I'm going to introduce the interdomain source address validation subnet architecture. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, I'll start with a brief background. Next slide, please. Okay, the interdomain subnet architecture aims to provide a high level framework for developing new interdomain cell mechanisms. It aims to address the problems of existing interdomain cell mechanisms and meet the requirements proposed in the interdomain problem, pro problem statement draft. And here is a list of historical versions. In ITF 115, we introduced the version 00, and in the last ITF meeting, we introduced the 01 version. After that meeting, we have received some valuable comments, and we, we revised the draft and submitted two new versions. Next slides, please. And here are some comments on version 01. Um, Somebody suggests that we should remove the details which may relate it to a specific solution. So we revised the draft to make the interdomain subnet architecture more general. And CRM suggests that some terminology may not be clearly defined. So we revised the names and descriptions of different sub-related information. And someone suggests that we should actively elaborate on what diagnosis and logging we would do. So we add more management considerations. Next slide, please. And there are also some comments about the convergence consideration. So we add a new convergence considerations section. Next slide. And we also received some comments about the security considerations. So we carefully revised the draft and add more security considerations. Next slide, please. And Xue Yan Song asked, what is the relationship and difference between the interdomain and the interdomain architecture? We respond that compared to interdomain subnet architecture, Interdomain subnet architecture uses more AS level information, such as RPKI, RAW, and ASPAR objects, or AS level forwarding path information. And they have different deployment, convergence, management, and security considerations. And Jintan asked, what is the relationship between the architect draft and the other draft about sub table? We respond that this architecture draft describes the high-level framework to generate sub-rules, while the other draft describes how to organize and use a sub-table. Next slide. So here are main updates compared to version 01. And we have made some many updates in interdomain subnet architecture section. We revise the cell related information and sources, add the description of cell specific messages, define the priorities of different cell related information sources, and add the description of management channel and information channel. We also revise the partial or incremental deployment section, add a new convergence considerations section and add a new management consideration section and revise the security consideration section. Next slide, please. Okay, before I introduce the interdomain subnet architecture, let's have a quick review of the requirements. And in the interdomain problem statement, there are four requirements. 
The requirement number one is about improving accuracy, and requirement number two is working in incremental and partial deployment. The requirement number three is reducing operational overhead, and the requirement number four is communicating self-specific information between assets. Next slide. Yeah, the problem. Okay, next slide. So this is the basic idea of interdomain subnet architecture. To meet requirement number one, number three, and number four, interdomain subnet architecture allows ASs to communicate self-specific information through a self-specific protocol. So when self-specific information is available, self-specific information is preferentially used to generate self-rules. It is because self-specific information can help generate more accurate self-rules than the information such as routing information used in existing interdomain self-mechanisms. So to meet requirement number two, in partial or incremental deployment scenarios, when self-specific information for some prefixes are not available, general information, such as routing information or RPKI, raw, and ASPAR objects can be used to generate self-rules. Next slide. And we propose two kinds of self-related information and sources. The first one is self-specific information. It is the information designed specifically for self. It may include the real forwarding path information from other ESs, which consists of their legitimate source prefixes and the corresponding incoming interfaces. The other kind of uh, information is general information. It refers to the information that is not designed for self, but can also be used for self to some extent, such as routing information in RIPs and FIBs, the relationships between prefixes and AS numbers in RPKI raw objects, and the customer to provider relationships in RPKI ASPAR objects. As mentioned above, the self-specific information can help generate more accurate self-rules because it's designed specifically for self. Next slide, please. And here we propose the concept of self-specific messages. The self-specific messages pro propagate or originate self-specific information between the self-specific protocol speakers in different ASs. The self-specific protocol speaker can obtain the forwarding path information towards each destination AS based on its local RIP information. And then it can advertise the forwarding path information through self-specific messages. So after receiving and processing the self-specific messages from other ASs, the AS can finally obtain the legitimate incoming interfaces for the source prefixes of the origin AS. Next slide, please. Before we go on to the next slide, given that we have enough time to figure this out, I'm going to ask a question here. I'm a little confused. Mm -hmm. uh, what SAV needs to propagate is information about what sources may appear where. I wouldn't think SAV would be forwarding, forwarding path information. That's what routing protocols do. That's which way do you go to reach a destination, which is the opposite. And the point that has been made multiple times in the course of this work is the whole point is that they are not interchangeable. Did you really mean that you want the SAV specific protocol to be obtaining forwarding path information or to be propagating source location information, or is there some subtler interaction you're trying to get across? Yeah, so uh, maybe, so in the South specific messages, we plan to 
carry the forwarding path information. But you know, the as well as the source location, including the source prefixes of uh, AS and the path it selected to another destination AS. But it may cause some convergence issues. So we also have some convergence considerations later. Okay, we should make sure this is the, what we're proposing is very clear in the architecture so that the working group can decide how to make the choices about it. Yeah, here is an example. Uh, this is a scenario. This is a limited prefix propagation scenario caused by no export. This scenario has been described in the interdomain problem statement draft. So in this case, when AS1 and AS4 deploy self and AS4 will improperly block the legitimate traffic originated from AS1. So, but uh, in this example, I'll show how to use the self-specific message can make the accurate self. Assume AS1 selects AS1 to AS2 to S4 as the best forwarding path to prefix P4. So AS1 and AS4 can communicate this kind of information. So by using the self-specific protocol, AS1 advertise its forwarding path information in self-specific messages. So after receiving the self-specific messages originated from AS1, AS4 can identify the legitimate incoming interface for source prefix of AS1. So this is an example. Let me check something. Rudiger, did you want to ask your question now? We have some people on the queue, so. Okay. Yeah, well, okay, actually, I, uh, I would have preferred to kind of continue immediately after your last question. Then go ahead, back uh, up. Kind of, I wonder whether there is already or at which point in time it will be introduced uh, at least a very basic model of what SAF specific message content would be. Kind of, kind of, kind of very simple data structure or, well, okay, uh, uh, schema drafts, I don't know, uh, just saying, well, okay, SAFnet is transmitting self specific information between self speakers uh, is kind of uh, uh, not giving a lot of content. And um, in the end, I think uh, uh, it, really, it really goes down to the, de to, to the details of the contents. At the moment, we are not at the details, I know. But we will need them. Do yeah. you want to comment further? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so, because this is a high level framework, so we don't go to the details, but we plan to write another draft about some details about the self specific information and the self specific messages. But in the architecture draft, we just briefly introduced them. Let me just say that while it is important we distinguish the architecture from the solution, sufficient clarity about what the architecture requires is a big help. Ben, go ahead. So I, th I think that what I'm about to say may be informed by the fact that we are kind of all individually hand-waving our way through what this information is. Yeah. And we might actually be disagreeing about that without having told each other. Um, <laughs> so I think, on, on Joel, on your point about this uh, the carrying forwarding information in the SAV-specific protocol, um, I generally agree with what you were saying. Um, we certainly don't want this to be used to distribute information used for forwarding. But I can imagine, and I suspect this is going to cause Jeff to stand up um, because it's going to have echoes of interactions between SAFI 1 and SAFI 2. I can imagine a situation where you encounter a BGP pinch point and paths start getting hidden. And you need to redistribute that forwarding information into its SAV specific form in order to propagate it upstream, in order to not suffer from the path hiding effect that we currently have with URPF. Um, that is 
I think I'm making set that sound a lot simpler than it's going to end up being. <laughs> but I but think it's a it valid is, point. But I think it is going to end up being something we need to do. Thank you, Ben. Igor? Sure, I guess I can go now as opposed to just wait till the end. Um, but first of all, thank you for being very responsive to the comments that you received before. Um, but since we're talking about different abstract information, um, I would just add that it's, the draft seems to bifurcate information into sub specific so stuff that developed specifically for SAV, and gen, uh, generic meaning stuff that's developed not for SAV. I think there is also a possibility of some dual use information, the information that was developed for multiple purposes, SAV included. Um, it may be, and uh, why it may be important is that it could be very high quality for SAV, and yet it may have already existing uh, dissemination protocol. So it wouldn't need another protocol. Um, another point um, is that is, is the draft seems to treat gen generic or general information all the same, and yet I see it, there are two classes that are quite different, so it's like static and dynamic. So static information is like manual configuration or PKI registries, and dynamic is stuff that comes from uh, forwarding path. Mm -hmm. um, as it was mentioned, I think Ben mentioned it before uh, for previous draft, that the comment that it could be very challenging to keep your SAV information uh, synchronized real time with a change with dynamic information, but it could be much easier with static. I think it's especially important for interdomain uh, problem, just because the paths are longer and less into your control. So it may be useful to highlight in the architecture document that those two building blocks are different, and maybe interdomain solutions could focus on discovering permissible paths versus real forwarding paths, which is actually quite nice dis uh, distinction that you make in the document, uh, where intra-domain may have a chance of being more into the real path for uh, discovery. Okay, thank you. So I can go ahead. Okay, next slide. So here is a brief workflow of inter-domain subnet architecture. It consolidates self related information from multiple sources and generates self rules based on the self related information. Next slide. So, we also propose a new concept of self information base. It consolidates self related information from various sources. And here is the this structure of the self information base, uh, we can see each rule records the index, the prefix, the prefix valid AS level incoming interface, the prefix incoming direction, and the corresponding self information source. We also note that different self information sources may specify different incoming interfaces for the same prefix. So, for example, the 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 rule with index two, sub-specific information specifies interface two as the only incoming interface for prefix P1, but the rule with index three, the general information specifies interface three as the only incoming interface for prefix P1. So next slide, please. So how to identify the most accurate incoming interface when there is a conflict between different source information sources? Interdomain subnet architecture assigns priorities to different self information sources and preferentially uses higher priority information to generate self rules. And uh, we show the priority ranking for different self information sources here. Because uh, self specific information can help generate more accurate self rules, so it has a higher priority than general information. So, in this example, we will finally choose 
the self-specific information and specify interface 2 as the only accurate incoming interface for prefix P1. Next slide. Now here, we abstract two kinds of channels in interdomain cell, cell net architecture. The first is management channel. It's used to deliver manual configurations of network operators. And the second is information channel. It's used to transmit cell-related information from different sources. Next slide, please. So for partial and incremental deployment consideration, we, we think the new interdomain cell mechanisms must support partial or incremental deployment. So when self-specific information for some prefixes are unavailable, general information should be used to generate self-rules for these prefixes. And to reduce the deployment risks, network operators can enable the block action increment, incrementally. First, they can just conduct measurement and analyze the accuracy. Then they can limit the read. And finally, after verifying the accuracy, the impact on forwarding and operational overhead, they can choose to block packets with invalid results. Next slide. For convergence considerations, the source information base manager should collect self-related information from various self-information sources and consolidate them in a timely manner. For general information, it relies on the convergence mechanisms in routing protocol or RPKI. But for self-specific information, the self-specific protocol speaker should launch self-specific messages to adapt to route changes in a timely manner. Therefore, the self-specific protocol must be designed with consideration of factors that may affect the convergence. Next slide, please. For management considerations, the first consideration is about management interoperability. It means devices from different vendors or different releases of the same product can be managed through a unified data model, such as your model. And the second is about management scalability. Scalable operation and management methods such as net configuration protocol or syslog protocol should be supported. And about implementation considerations, we think management operations including diagnosis and logging, should be designed and implemented in existing protocols or by protocol extensions. For security considerations, the security threats faced by self-specific protocol in interdomain networks can be categorized into two main aspects. They are session security threats and content security threats. So existing security mechanisms can be used or a new security mechanism should be designed to secure self-specific protocol. But the detailed design is after a scope for this architecture document. I think I missed uh, somebody getting on the queue. Jeff, sorry. Do I need to back up a slide or two? You don't need the backup. Jeff has. Uh, so for your incremental deployment considerations, one of the things you probably wish to discuss is that there is a mismatch of what incremental means in this case. You can certainly roll out SAV enforcement throughout a network incrementally, mm -hmm. but you cannot necessarily in such circumstances roll out the SAV table building for the network. You need to have the SAV table for that device that will require potentially participation of more routing systems to build the SAV table than you would use for enforcement. Okay, we are considered. It's about the router subtable building, right? Uh, let me phrase it a little differently. I think that the incremental con deployment considerations of the architecture need to distinguish between incremental deployment of support for the SAV protocol and its information and incremental deployment of acting on the SAV information. And those are both, we actually, as far as I can tell, need to be able to enable incremental deployment in both dimensions. 
Thank you. So uh, next slide. So in summary, the interdomain subnet architecture can meet the requirements proposed in existing interdomain problem statement. For requirement number one, sub-specific information can generate more accurate sub-rules than general information, which is used in existing mechanisms. For requirement number two, when some sub-specific information is not available in incremental or partial deployment scenarios, the general information can still be used. For requirement number three, sub-related information can be automatically collected through information channels. And for requirement number four, sub-specific protocol is proposed and can be used to communicate sub-specific information between ASCs. Next slide. So in the next step, we solicit comments and refine the draft. Uh, many thanks to so much people for their uh, valuable comments and your comments are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further comments on this presentation? Sriram, go ahead. Sriram, go ahead. Can't hear you. I see you moving your lips, but we're not hearing you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so my question is, uh, you mentioned that uh, you are going to include the forwarding path in the SAV specific message. Um, the forwarding path, does it cons can consist like a sequence of ASS uh, over which the data will flow back from the sending um, uh, from the sending AS to the receiving AS. So will it, will it include a complete list of the ASS uh, over which the data will flow back to the um, other AS? Yeah, the, you mean the sending AS, how can the sending AS can identify the forwarding path information to other AS? Well, Correct. I yeah, believe, yeah. Sri Ram, I think the, the answer to this is we need to see the information model for what you're putting in the SAV specific information. And Sri Ram was bringing up one example. Even assuming there's forwarding information, there's different granularities or structuring of them, and we need to be clear about what kind of information we're handling. And I don't think you can answer it right now, but you do need to keep in mind in clarifying the draft that it would really help to be much more crisp about what this needs to describe. Yeah, we, we plan to submit another draft to specify what is the information and the content and the data structure of the sub-specific sub information. So the, the, it doesn't need to be a data structure. That's why several people use the phrase information model. We need to know what it needs to contain. Not what the bit encoding is. We don't care what the bit encoding is. We can, we can lovely argue about bit encodings from now till doomsday. But what we need to know is what are you trying to represent and what is the relationship among them so we can all evaluate, does this come together? OK. And that will be very helpful. Uh, Lee Bin, go ahead. Can you hear me? Got one more question. Okay, I uh, I want to talk about the about the incremental deployment. Actually, in the draft we have talked, uh, we have discussed the two dimensions about the incremental uh, deployment. Uh, the first one is that we need to consider the incremental deployment of the interdomain subnet architecture. Uh, the second one is that we also need to consider the incremental deployment of the south specific. Hi, Li Bin. Can you speak loudly? Um, instead of. Can you send it to the chat or to the list, please? We're having trouble hearing you. So probably better if you summarized it to the chat or the list. OK, can, can you hear me now? Just what? not quite enough crispness in what we can hear. And I, I think you're probably asking a useful question, but send it either to the chat or to the list. And the list would be best, and we'll, continue, we'll get a response there. OK, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. 
Now we've got Lan Cheng Chen presenting on the table size. Or are you, oh, okay. you, you're gonna, yes. Yeah. Um, I will ask here, general questions are a good thing. This can easily descend into highly detailed questions about exactly what that level of question should be taken to the list. General questions, let's take in response to, as he talks. Okay, hello everyone. <laughs> so it's a measurement study to calculate the scale of self table and FIB. So self table is the table or data structure that implements several and is used for self in the data plan. And three validation modes of self table are defined in the self table draft. And this is a simple example. Uh, look at this figure on the upper right. There are three ASs, and ASX is connected to AS1 and AS2. AS1 has two prefixes. They are prefix P1 and prefix P2, and AS2 has prefix P3. So assume ASX deploys self, and it generates self table with different validation modes. So first, look at the mode one. Mode one is an interface level mode, and it takes effect on the configured interface. It's also called interface-based prefix allow list because only packets with source addresses in this list can be accepted at the configured interface. And mode two is also an inter interface level mode, and it's called interface-based prefix block list because packets with source addresses in this list will be blocked at the configured interface. And the mode three, actually, it is a router level mode, but in our simulation, every AS is treated as a node, so it's assumed to be organized as uh, AS level mode here. And um, next slide, please. And we heard that many people are concerned about the scale of self tables with different validation modes. So we conduct simulations to compare the scale of FIB and self -table, sub tables by using real RIB data provided by root views and repris. Next, please. So here are some assumptions. First, every AS in our simulation is treated as a node to generate AS level FIB, interface level self table with mode one and mode two, and AS level self table with mode three. For FIB generation, the shortest path policy is used to select the best forwarding path among multiple routes. And for self table generation, Self rules are generated based on the best forwarding path. For example, after knowing the forwarding path from ASY to ASX, ASX can identify the incoming interface for source prefix of ASY. So this is just a simple generation method. Yeah. Okay, and the second assumption, AS relationships are not considered here. It means for each AS, we generate a self table with mode one and mode two at each AS level interface, regardless of whether the connected AS is a customer, provider, or peer. And the third is to measure the skill, we calculate the number of prefix for each table. And the last assumption is only IPv4 is considered here. Next slide. And there are three steps in our simulation experiment. In step one, we extract the full rib of 319 ASs by using all public data provided by root views and repris, and generate the FIB of each AS using shortest path policy. In step two, for each of the 319 ASs, we generate a set rules for prefixes of the other 318 ASs and organize 
subtables with different validation modes. And in the last step, for each of the 319 ASCs, we calculate the scale of FIP containing only prefixes of the other 318 ASCs and the scale of subtables. Next slide, please. And here are results of the number of prefixes of FIB and subtable with different modes. And we can see the mode one and mode two, uh, the scale of mode one and mode two is smaller than that of FIB. It is because they are interface level, but FIB is an AS level table. So by comparing the AS level mode three and FIB, we can find the scale of Mode three is larger than the FIB. Okay, before we go on, Jeff and then Ben. General question, Jeff has, is any prefix aggregation being done as part of this process or are these all the specifics? Oh, uh, the, the prefix are collected from the data provided by root views and uh, rock we didn't do We didn't do any modification about these prefixes. Okay, uh, the next version of this presentation, I suggest looking at what aggregation effects will help. Uh, okay, thank you. Ben? <coughs> so part of me feel, feels like I must be missing something fairly obvious here, but I think that if this analysis could work, we wouldn't have this working group because the the implication of the of the the kind of the starting off point is that you can inspect routing data and determine what the feasible rpf paths are and if that were true we wouldn't be doing all of this work because we would just use bgp for this um, the path hiding I, it's not quite clear to me exactly which paths you're considering out of the ones that are on those table dumps, but even amongst that limited set of ASs, the path hiding that's going to be going on because best path because of best path selection at, in each of those ASs means that you can't possibly know what the true set of feasible paths are between them. All you're seeing is the paths that happen to be selected at best as best where they provide their data to RIS and to root views. Um, so I think that. I think you've you've got like a multiple order of magnitude underestimation of those size of those SAV tables in here. Um, and I don't think that that's through any fault of your own. I just don't think that this is a study that can be done with that data. Rudiger? <laughs> yes, and anyway, uh, uh, kind of calculating the stuff with the assumption that indeed just one selected path is going to be used, of course, is not really true. Uh, because yes, people are load distributing and uh, well, okay, uh, uh, people like to have backup paths that at some point will kick in and then there is convergence and people will be very disappointed if they are uh, subjected to soft drops. Yeah, so we made some assumptions here. And under this assumption, we can compare the results between subtable and, uh, and FIB. And so you've got a minute and a half. Okay, I'll be quick. And this is the distribution of the dashboard results, and we can also see the comparison between different modes and FIB. Next slide. And we also calculate the ratio of the mode three versus FIB, and we find most of the, all of the ASs for the skill of mode three is larger than FIB, and some of them may be two times or three times larger. So next slide. So we conclude that the scale of mode three would be very high if we record an entry for each prefix in FIB. Next slide. 
So to reduce the skill, some simple methods can be used, such as source prefix aggregation. It means if the mode one, mode two, or mode three records a prefix one and a sub prefix of prefix one, we assume it is prefix two. So the mode one, mode two, and the mode three can only record the entry with prefix one. Next. So after the source prefix aggregation, on average, the scale of subtable is reduced by more than 50%. N next, please. And the reduction can be clear thing here. Next. And next. Okay, and in summary, the scale of interface level subtable with mode one and mode two is smaller than FIB. And for mode three, for about 85% of ASCs, the scale of mode three is also smaller than FIB. And on average, the scale is 77% of that of FIB. And besides, we also believe the scale of subtable can be further reduced by using advanced compression techniques. Okay, thanks everyone. Are there any further questions about this presentation? Okay, Li Bin, I hope we're gonna be able to hear you for this next one, because I'd like you, I'd really like you to be able to present this material. Uh, yes, I'm here, uh, Joe. Hi, Joe, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please make sure okay. you speak clearly and your slides are up. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, okay, let's get started. Uh, hello, Arman, uh, sorry, first slide. Uh, I'm Li Bin Liu from Zhongguan Zhen Laboratory. Today I will present the architects. Uh, as their, uh, Slow down and lean into your microphone. We're having trouble hearing you again. Uh, okay, can you hear me now? Is it clear? It's better, but not great. I'm seeing people shaking their heads. And I try, I'm, I'm more concerned about whether the room can hear you. And I'm seeing people saying not as well as they'd like. Because um, this is an it, open source effort, and I'd love to be hearing about implementation efforts related to this. Uh, thank you. Uh, is it clear now? I changed my mic microphone. Well, I guess you continue. To, but speak a little slowly and as clearly as you can. I, I understand there are lots of obstacles. <laughs> uh, OK, 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 sure. Thank you. Uh, Okay, I will uh, present the recent progress of the open playground here. Uh, let's quickly review the uh, South open playground first, uh, which is abbreviated as South op uh, The first South op provides a web application uh, for users to, uh, to build network topology and configure the network with containerized network, topology, uh, uh, network technologies. According to the configurations from users, the backend of the OP can emulate the uh, cell scenarios using software routers and, and cell agents. Uh, besides, in cell OP, a uh, configuration database can store the emulated cell scenarios for replaying on the web application. In sum, uh, cell OP tries to build a, a virtualized network platform to enable easy implementation of some mechanisms and is open source on GitHub. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, here is a summary, summarization of some OP's contributions to some network group. I thank Joe for the suggestion to focus on the relation between some OP and the goals and the efforts of the some network group. At least some correspondence, uh, what some OP has done and will do and the statements in the charter of some network group. Uh, for example, in the charter, uh, it is stated that existing cell mechanisms like URPF related technologies may improperly permit uh, spoofed traffic or block legitimate traffic. And they should include an analysis of their current solutions and their limitations. Uh, in correspondence to this, cell OP implements and emulates uh, URPF based cell mechanisms in different network scenarios and analyzes the emulation results. In the charter, it is stated that the accuracy of the 
uh, new cell mechanisms is expected to improve upon their current ones. Uh, in correspondence uh, to, uh, to this statement, so OP has implemented and emulated a new uh, uh, cell mechanism called RPDP uh, by, by extending BGP and demonstrates its accuracy improvement upon existing mechanisms. Uh, in addition, in the charter, it is stated that the cell network group will coordinate and collaborate with other work groups as needed specific interactions may include, such as IDR for BJP extensions. Uh, uh, therefore, based on cell OP, we plan to implement new, uh, new mechanisms for generating uh, cell rules by extending by, by extending BJP and emulate them in various network scenarios. Uh, in a word, so OP helps the uh, completion of work, uh, work group cut items. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, regarding the uh, development of our OP recently, we had committed 15,000 lines of code uh, to GitHub under the code of uh, cell OP had been split into three repositories, including cell reference router, cell agent, and the cell OP operation tools. The main development recently are in the repositories of cell agent and the cell OP operation tools. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, thank you. First, currently, uh, so OP uh, implemented two types of communication approaches between cell agents. One is implemented by gRPC, and another one is implemented by extending BJP. And it's used to implement RTBDP. In order to support the BJP extension and pass the messages communicated between cell agents, uh, we developed a cell agent client within the software router, and in the cell agent, an uh, agent server is implemented as a long running process to receive and send cell information to the client uh, via command promote and the HTTP. Uh, besides, the information key communication uh, between JRPC, agent server, uh, the, the cell applications, and the cell information base is achieved by the information queue, uh, which is also implemented in the cell agent. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, until now, so OP has implemented strict URPF, loose URPF, FP URPF, uh, EFP URPF with algorithm A and algorithm B uh, based on F FC3704 and S704. Also, uh, the RPKI ROA and the ASPA have been included in SAO OP and will be used to implement BASAL as we planned. Next slide, please. Uh, now, uh, we have different cell mechanisms and cell information uh, stored in the cell information base and collected from the general information and the RPDP. Therefore, different cell rules corresponding to the uh, different cell mechanisms are ready in the control plane. But one question is that how can we deploy the cell rules with IP tables flexibly uh, or change the cell rules at the right time? Uh, currently in cell OP, uh, we have implemented a very interface which allow users to uh, specify the cell mechanisms used and the deploy or change cell rules at runtime. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in order to test whether the cell rules can function correctly in the data plane, uh, or emulate the effect of different cell mechanisms in the data plane. A UDP-based traffic generator has been implemented and has some features to support the emulations of various cell scenarios, such as uh, configuring source and the destination address, uh, addresses flexibly, um, configuring, configuring the volume of generated traffic dynamically, uh, reporting the uh, traffic statistics in a real-time manner and supporting a flexible deployment. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, for the uh, future development plan uh, of our OP, 
uh, we have aligned the South Net BJP tensions of its vendors and plan to implement the mechanisms of uh, source prefix advertising and uh, source prefix discovery. Uh, and we are going to uh, present the outcomes as, at the IETF 118 meeting. Um, uh, finally, if you are interested in this project and have any ideas to contribute to it, use it, uh, or any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, also, we had attended the Hexon last weekend. Uh, welcome to join us to promote it and hope to champion it together next time. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Are there any questions, comments about this? Um, you should have put yourself on the list, but I broke ahead. my phone and I put my laptop in my bag. So I just wanted to say this is really neat. Um, I can't wait to play with it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Joseph Hall from the Internet Society. I'm here as an individual. Thank you. We have one more presentation. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. Okay. Uh, Fang, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Fang Gao from Zhongguanquan Laboratory. Uh, could you go back to the first page? slide. Okay, the presentation is about a young model of sublet. Uh, we have the co-authors of Dan Li, Chang Wang, um, Jianping Wu, uh, and Wei Qiang. Uh, at the beginning, it's some context about this young model and the draft. This sublet young model provides a base framework for configuring and manage a sub subsystem, which is primarily include the sub table and sub rules. And it also served the data model for the static sub rule configuration. The data model is designed by referring to the sublet function defined in the related draft of architecture and the sub table. And this data model haven't touched any content of the protocol extension. And maybe the young model of them will be augment this basic data model. The model includes three parts, sublet, configuration, state, and event notification. Next slide, please. In this zero to version of the draft, the data model is designed based on the implementation experience and young rules. The zero to version is an initial version and of course not a fellow version. It will be updated continuous according to your comments and the, the implementations. The document is added in compliance with the young rules defined in RFC 8407. Next, please. I will note that when the working group adopts this, we may well make non-backwards compatible changes or radical changes. And even when we get information models for various pieces, we may need to make significant changes. So we are not bound because this is not done yet by the Yang rules about what kinds of changes one can make. We do want to maintain that it is compliant and proper Yang, however. Okay, uh, this is the primary building block of Sublet Young. There are subtable and sub rules. We have a brief recall. A subtable is constituted by a list of sub rules, and uh, each sub rule is a pair of source prefix and valid income interface. Now, something looks like so similar with the rib and the, its routing entries. So the design of the sublet young model make a deep reference to RFC 8349, which is the basic young model for RIP and the routing manager. Next, please. Uh, in, the, in the whole view of the operation, to enable a sublet filter on a router on a management plane, there are works from three aspects. The first one is the typical configuration management to configuring the running parameters for sublet function. And the second one is about the self-entry management. It will focus on the static sub rule configuration and the read-only state of each sub rule collection. 
And the last one is also a typical event management for sublet function. The LMS and the router could communicate such three kinds of information through the sublet YAML. And uh, next, please. Accordingly, in the tree diagram of sublet YAML, the configuration part contains two things. One is sublet global or interface configuration, and uh, another one is the about the st static sub rules configuration. And in the state part, it also includes the sub table information and the sub interface information. In the event part, it defines some notification about the sub -like function. On the right side, it just needs a summary for these five kind of information. And we will go to the detail of each one, one by one. And then next, Okay, the first one is about the sublet general configuration. On the right side, it's the, all the detail loads of this part. In the global configuration level or in the device level configuration, the young model could control for the sublet function enable or disablement. And it also could set in the parameters for sub mode, sub table capacity, sub interface source priorities, and so on. And in interface configuration level, it also could control for the sublet function on this specific interface. And the setting sub mode, resetting sub statistics for this interface. And then next, please. Uh, this is about the static sub rules configuration. The young model could support to add, delete, or update each sub rule entries by setting the value of source prefix and the incoming interface for both V4 and V6 sub rules. It also could set the capacity of sub table and the up limitation of V4 and V6 sub rules. And next. Uh, this is the read only nodes for the sub, sub table state. It could collect all sub rules of V4 and V6 family, and it also could just catch the filtered sub rules by the specific source prefix. And for each sub rule, the static information or the packet count information could be carried out at the same time. Next, please. And this is the young nodes for the interface statement of sublet. The sub statics and the sub packet counters for each interface could be recorded and report. For example, the sub counters of valid, invalid, or drop packet by executing the sublet function. And the next, please. And uh, this is the last part about the sublet event. Currently, it just defines one type of notification, that is the over limitation of sub table capacity should be notified to the NMS. And maybe more event will be supported to uh, supplement according to the requirement. And the next. Next, please, Joe. Uh, here is the overview about the sublet young modules. The data structure of all the nodes in the tree diagram mentioned above are defined in the three modules. As shown in the diagram, um, generally, the first one of the three models is named IETF SAF. It is a basic or general component for the sublet young module. And the second one is V4 SAF. If to define the data structure for the additional data specific to V4 SAF. And accordingly, the V6 SAF define the additional data specific to V6 SAF. And the data model is expected to be augmented by art sub related functions, data models in the future accordingly. And next, please. At last, it's a simple for example, about how to configure the static sub rules through the mentioned young models above. And uh, uh, I will skip the details. Mm -hmm. Briefly, it just uh, download 
and setting the value of source prefix and the incoming interface for, for the each sub rule on root A. And the next place, and then it's the running data after configuring the sub rules. Uh, for each sub rule, except the prefix and the incoming interface, it also lists the information of um, packet counts of sublet. And the next, please. Uh, okay, and last is about the consideration of next step. According to the following updates of sublet architecture draft, maybe there are more sub rules from other types of control plane protocol will be supported by the young model later on. As we start the young design earlier, so it will be a better thing if it could have more design from anyone interested with this. And any comments from you or co-design are welcome. Okay, that's all, thanks. Any comments? Nobody's on the list, nobody's walking to the microphone. I guess there are no comments at this time. I think given the, the relationship between the work, this is it's very early for figuring out the structure of the Yang, but thank you for starting to work on it so that we have a place to record things as we work our way forward. With that, uh, yeah. I'll give you almost 10 minutes of your life back. Thank you, guys. It, yeah. Uh, hi, this is Ben Schwartz from, from Meta. I just wanted to mention that uh, there's the, that I've been shopping a proposal that's uh, traceable to this work um, uh, called RESAF. Uh, we brought it to SEC Dispatch, who, uh, among other things, suggested that we make a mailing list for it. I'm going to try to take a look at some, uh, some of the requirements documents here and see if there's something we can contribute. Um, but also, it looks like we'll have a mailing list. That, that proposal is about data plane uh, protections that are cryptographically based, so really a very radically different approach from this. Uh, but if anybody's interested, please come talk to me. Thank you. Thank you. 